In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an example that's provided in the maths manual called the voltage mirror. Rather than simply inverting a control voltage, we also offset it, which allows us to create a crossfading effect for any kind of signal without using a dedicated module. I'll set up an audio crossfade between two different oscillator outputs. So what we have here is a normal envelope that you might get from sending a gate or trigger into maths. Maths will slew whatever that gate is into an envelope. In this case, we'll just have a trigger. So we have this nice slow envelope, and the first thing we're going to do is invert it. And this could be useful for a lot of things, but this doesn't get us to crossfader territory. All this does is invert our signal. So what we're going to do is take this and use the offset to push it up into the positive voltage range. And this is our final goal. We want to have one signal that's high, one signal that's low, and we want to cross fade between them. So as one comes up, the other is going down. And at the peak of the inverted and non-inverted envelope, the opposite is true. What started as low is high and what started as high is low and then fade out. So this voltage mirror is what we're going to set up in our patch example. As we mentioned in the whiteboard, what I'm going to be setting up is a cross fade between two audio sources. In this case, it's going to be the sign output from the DPO and the final output from the DPO. So we're going to be fading in a very Buchla-ish manner from a waveform that has very little harmonic content to a waveform that has a lot of harmonic content. For that, we're going to be using two outputs from the DPO. We're going to be using three channels over here as VCAs, because you can never have too many VCAs. And we're going to be using several channels of maths. First things first, I'm going to take the two audio outputs and send them to the Optimix. Short cables should do it. Right now I'm monitoring the sum output of the Optimix, but eventually I'm going to move that over to here. and You'll see why once we get there. But just so we hear what's going on, we've got the sign output on channel 1 of the Optimix. And the same output from the DPO, the final output going there. So what we want to do is set up the crossfade between the two. The easier part, what I'm going to set up first, is that we're going to have the unity output from channel 1 of this maths going to the control the level of the final output. And keep in mind, this unity output, this channel 1 output here, is completely unaffected by anything that happens uh, in this side of the maths. So you've always got your old standby unity output there for something like this. So I'll send that to the final output control voltage. And now when we turn that up, when I press the keyboard controller, we get a fairly standard envelope VCA setup. Nice thing about the Optimix is it also fades in the, the higher harmonic content because it's a low pass gate. So next what we want to do, and I'm going to turn that down, is we're going to get the voltage mirror set up to control channel one of the Optimix. So I already have my attenuverter set. What we're going to do is normally you would put whatever control voltage you want mirrored into input two. But since we're using channel one of the Optimix, we're just going to use the channel one attenuverter, and that's going to be fully inverted through channel one. That flows down through these other signals. So mind that these two are set to null. Channel three is going to be set with the full DC offset in the positive range. So that's where we get the offset that we saw in the mirror in the second or the bottom portion of the whiteboard. And that's what's going to combine to come out of the sum input. So we're going to take all that, we're going to send that to the control voltage for the sine wave. Now note that once we turn up this channel, we're in a situation where the sine signal is always present. But when I press the keyboard controller, we'll hear it fade out and then come back in. So with every key press, it fades down and comes back in. And that's exactly what we want our voltage mirror to be doing. We want the sine wave to start out and then go down while the higher harmonic content of the final output comes in. But when we have 
our control voltage is turned up on the Optimix, we have a situation where the sine wave is always up. And when we don't want to always hear it, we're going to send it through another VCA. So I'm going to move my monitoring output to channel one of the mod to mix. And then I'm going to patch the sum output from the Optimix. So these two VCAs are being mixed together and sent to the input of my final or master VCA. And then for that, I'm going to use a second envelope over here with maths. Uh, you could use anything you want or a different envelope. I'm just using this. And again, I could use channel four on this one, but I just want to keep everything out of the way. And with that, once we turn everything up, we're at our final patch. So now when I press a key, you can hear the sine wave start. The more complex shape fade in, and the sine wave sort of gets out of its way. And as soon as I release and we go into the fall portion, they invert and they go back to where they started. Now to make this patch even more interesting, we could add in some modulation to the final output so that we have not only more frequency content, but also a little bit of uh, amplitude modulation in there as well. So I've got channel A of the DPO set up as an LFO, and that's normal through the mod bus to these attenuators here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of modulation to the uh, fold control on the wave folder. That's a really great tone. And that is the goal. We've got the voltage mirror crossfading using a couple of VCAs coming from two audio inputs. So you don't necessarily need a dedicated crossfader module. They're very handy and could save you some space, but if you have just math and a couple of VCAs, you can set up a crossfader just as effectively. You don't necessarily have to use two audio inputs, so try and think about some other things you might want to crossfade between. Uh, everything's fair game on your rack, control voltage and audio voltage. It's all, it's all on the table. So uh, set this up, try and experiments, and hopefully you found this helpful. Wow, wow, wow.